So I'm sat in the Hyundai Ioniq 5 and um, it's a car that charges extremely fast but only in the right conditions. So in summer I got 220 kilowatts and um, that's maximum speed that this car does and that means that from 10% state of charge to 80% uh, it should do that in 18 minutes. But a lot of reports um, are from people complaining that they've got this car and they're not getting anywhere near the advertised speeds. Because you've got to think that this car is, is pretty special in that it does charge so fast. But a lot of people are buying the car based on that, you know. So Hyundai say, oh yeah, charges in 18 minutes. But they don't say charges in 18 minutes or but your battery has to be warm enough. Or 18 minutes only if it's 25 degrees outside or something like that. They say it in the small print, but the dealers probably don't mention that. Um, uh, so yeah, I think, I, I think it's, it would be a good test, wouldn't it? Just to see, I'm going to do a 20 minute drive down to Ionity. Um, hopefully it's working, hopefully it's getting full speed because of course you never know really. I've got 22% state of charge at the moment. I should get there with 15%, uh, that'll be nice and low. So I should ramp up to full speed in theory. And I've got a little thing plugged in into the OBD port, which is this little port down there. I've had fun with that in the past with the e-Nero, but uh, yeah, I've got a little device plugged in there. And with that device, you can get all this fancy data like that. And um, it tells me that the battery temperature uh, ranges between five and eight degrees. And really we want 20 degrees minimum, I, I believe, to get full speed. So um, we'll see what happens. But this car does have a battery heater. I've got the Eco Pack in this one. And if you have the Eco Pack, it comes with, it, it, you get a heat pump which is more efficient for heating and cooling the inside, but also the battery heater, which in theory should keep the battery nice and warm. But there are mixed reports as to whether that even kicks in at uh, this sort of temperature or whether it has to be even lower, like minus five or something like that, or below zero. So it's possible that that's not even doing anything. So I'm going to navigate to it using the sat nav on the car. So we go to nav and search and Ionity, here we go, so Shell Channel Gateway set as destination so we're reset on the trip meter 46 miles on the on the range meter, 22% battery it's 11 miles there, 15 minutes it should take and it really is just a straight road down there Oh, I can't stand these sat nav things. It's awful. Look at that. I mean, what is that tacky thing? Okay, so let's go. These Ionity chargers are really convenient. I've never used them before, and they're so close to me. I have no idea. It's ridiculous, isn't it? But you've got services down there. Big shell garage. There. And just a few miles down the road that way is the channel tunnel. So they're really well positioned chargers and I'm surprised they're so empty. Okay, so I got here with 17% um, battery, so a little bit better than a better route planner said. Um, and I did have the heating on actually in the end, so I, I did have it at set to 22. Three miles per kilowatt hour with 30 miles left on the, on the range meter. So uh, let's plug it in and we'll see what kind of speeds we get. I don't think we're going to get a very good speed. Should we take guesses as to what we're going to get? I'm going to say it's going to max at 120 kilowatts. And that, I might be way off with that. But let's see what happens. Let's get a RFID card. And I've got to charge my Hyundai card. So I'm going to do that. Gone up to 56 kilowatts. Let's see what we can get. So, if we look at this, we can see that the battery temperature is just going up a little bit. Um, but yes, we're, we're not drawing very much, are we? We've got 65, it's saying that's 65 kilowatts on battery power here. I've been here a few minutes and um, we're now on 68 kilowatts of power and it's telling me it's going to be uh, 28 minutes to get to 80 percent 
So that's a far cry, isn't it, from the 18 minutes to 80% that Hyundai advertise. But this is the reality, unfortunately, this is the reality of having most electric cars. Um, when you plug in in cold temperatures, it just it's slower and it's just just the way it is because if the battery is cold it doesn't charge as fast as it should. Uh, that said Teslas crack this because when on a Tesla if you input a supercharger um, then it will preheat the battery before you get there and it will make sure the battery is nice and warm to get the faster charging speed um, and this doesn't do that yet but apparently Hyundai are working on it and there will be an update that will allow it so that would be good, although it, it's only when you, it would only be when you're navigating using the sat-nav like I have now. It'll only work then, and um, not if you're using like Apple Maps or Google or whatever. So at the moment we're on 35% battery and uh, we're at 62 kilowatts, so it hasn't really changed much. It looked like it was kind of going to shoot up actually, the power, and then it went back down again. Um, but interestingly, so looking at the car scanner, it says we've got up to 23 degrees battery temperature, but it's still minimum 13 degrees. So that means that all the cells in the battery, um, they're all kind of differing, of differing temperatures. Um, but 23 degrees would be good enough. I would have thought to get a pretty decent charge, but instead, no, we're just sitting at 62 kilowatts. Now there's always the possibility that it's an, an issue with ionity. Um, because I, I have varying degrees of uh, success with Ionity, really. But, um, but given, that, given the reports I've heard from other people, this actually see, sounds consistent with, with what they've said, and, uh, and that it just the Ionic 5 is not very happy at low temperatures um, at charging. So what it does look like, based on this, it looks like it might be trying to divert a little bit more heat to the battery, or the, the, perhaps just the battery does that anyway. But bearing in mind this model does have the battery heater, it should be able to put some heat into it, but quite how much that is, I don't know. So it says another 19 minutes to 80%, so I'll wait until 80% and I'll just see how long the whole thing has taken. But so far this does show that if you have an Ionic 5 in winter, and maybe you're, maybe you're going on a long journey or something, and you're expecting that 18 minutes to 80%, you might be a little bit um, bothered that it's actually not that good so something to bear in mind all electric cars do have the issue that they all charge slower in winter but it's just some oh no it's now shot up so now we've got 104 kilowatts right so the battery temperature now the maximum battery temperature has now hit 25 degrees and at that point it's now shot up so the power is now shot up to 105 kilowatts so that's interesting. So that is almost like at 25 degrees, that is a point when it starts to, when it's happy to ramp up. But it's still the minimum battery temperature is 15. So it goes from at the moment 15 to 26, in fact. So it's still not comfortable giving me full speed. Perhaps if the battery minimum was 25 and the maximum was 25 as well, maybe it would have. Um, and because it doesn't really tell you anything on here, um, who knows what's going on in, inside the Ionic. It's only, you know, it's only that I've got this kind of geeky thing here that I can actually see what's what's kind of happening but it would be nice if it told you what the charging curve was going to be actually inside the car because the car knows in theory it knows the battery management system should know all this sort of stuff because I do think it's cheeky you can't advertise very fast charging speeds and then add an enormous caveat that actually in winter you don't get anything close to that so to find the OBD port and that's what that goes into it's down here, and hopefully you can see that okay. Now this thing, that says fuse on it. This is right-hand drive, so it's to the right of the steering wheel. I think it would be on the left in, uh, in left-hand drive countries. But now, I thought I had to remove that, but you don't. So that's fantastic, because that's what I had to do in, in other cars. But you actually just put it down here, and you have to feel around a bit. But there we go, it just slots in there. Just under there. Something that is quite interesting, to me at least, is that there's a big cooling vent at the front of the car, and that will open um, 
if it needs to get some air to the battery to cool it down. So thankfully that's not working at the moment. So when I charged, uh, when I was doing the Land's End to John O'Groats trip, I charged and I did some filming then at a charger and at that point it was it was opening and making a hell of a sound and it's not doing that now. So that's good. So any heat generated by charging the battery, it is at least just leaving that heat in there to get a faster speed. So that's good at least, that they're not still just opening that vent. Um, okay, so now we're at 117 kilowatts. So it is kind of, it, it's, it's trying to get a bit higher, isn't it? It's doing its best, poor thing. Now something that I do have enabled on here is winter mode. And winter mode is supposed to give a little bit more heat to the battery to enable faster charging. But I, again, it's one of those things, no one seems to know exactly how it works. I've been doing a lot of digging and I just can't find out. Um, but it could be that it's in sub-zero temperatures. So not here, because at the moment it's six degrees outside. But yeah, now we're getting 118 kilowatts. I think that's what I said. Did I say that? I said about like 120, didn't I? That was my guess. Um, and we're at 50% state of charge at the moment. And it says another 12 minutes to 80%. Uh, looking at the car scanner, it says we've got between 25 to 32 degrees of battery temperature, which would suggest to me that that should be absolutely perfect and that should then be getting full speed. But looking at the FastNed charging graph, at 64%, we should still be getting something like 180 by the looks of it, 180 kilowatts, but this is only 120. So the point of this video is just to say that you shouldn't have to worry about all of this stuff. You shouldn't have to have, you shouldn't have to plug in a dongle. You shouldn't have to look at all these technical things on a phone. You should just be able to know that when you get to a charger, you plug in and you get close to the advertised speed. Um, now I'm also, I'm, I'm kind of moaning a little bit more than I probably should in that a lot of cars don't even get anything close to this, you know, and this is saying 31 minutes to a hundred percent. And if I was in my e Nero, I would be looking at probably like an hour and a half or something in total, about an hour and a half probably to get to 100%, I would have thought, at these temperatures. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but I think it would be about that. So, um, you know, it's a bit of a first world problem, I suppose, but at the same time, you know, people do buy cars and uh, rely on, ch on I mean, refueling, for instance, quickly to then get to the next destination. So you've already got to factor in with an EV the fact that it is slower because you do have the charging stops. And obviously I'm just sat in the car, right? Normally when I charge, I'd be off, I'd be at the services over there and getting a coffee and stuff. So um, I, again, I, I don't want to make a big deal out of this particularly because most people aren't going to be affected by it. You know, you, you stop anyway, it has a decent enough range, you stop, you go to the services. But if you're relying on charging in a certain amount of time, you do have to factor in in winter it might be a bit slower in fact it probably will be a bit slower which is why Hyundai need to do this update and allow us to to precondition the battery so we get fast charging speeds there we go I think I'll leave the video there because I think I've probably gone on enough but um, it's just worth saying that yes if you have a Tesla you don't have this issue because it will precondition it when you get to a supercharger of course if you go to any other charger it probably won't precondition it and if you um, if you don't use the sat-nav, although why wouldn't you use the sat-nav in the Tesla because it's amazing, but yeah, if you don't use the sat-nav then it wouldn't precondition the battery either. But it's just an interesting, it's an interesting thing to think about when you, when you have an EV. Just remember, cold weather, it does impact the battery and that, of course, it makes, makes the charging speed not quite as good. Um, manufacturers should probably not advertise the charging speed uh, without saying in quite big letters, you know, best achievable charging speed or something like that. Okay, so we're at 80%, so I'll stop it now. So we got to 80%, that took 32 minutes. So certainly more than the 18 minutes that uh, Hyundai say. And it wasn't even down to 10%, was it? So it just shows you, doesn't it, that um, take these charging speeds with a pinch of salt. And just remember that there are lots of other factors in, involved. I mean, also, I was lucky. I was the only person charging at Ionity today. 
Sometimes I do wonder whether they get grid constrained at Ionity and they slow down charging speeds. That wasn't the case, I think, in this in this case. I think I was probably getting the, the best speed I possibly could. And it was the car that was doing all the slowing down. But there are lots of factors. Um, but this is just a piece of electronics, this car, isn't it? Remember that your broadband, when your broadband provider say that you're going to get a certain speed, you quite often you don't get that kind of speed, do you? Because there are lots of factors at play, and it's the same here. So yes, it's far more... Um, far more involved, isn't it, than a petrol car. That you, the petrol pump uh, gives you the petrol at roughly the same speed every every single time, and you're on your way. You obviously got to be a little bit more aware of these things in an EV. It, it's a bit more involved. I mean, really, in theory, you, you, st you still just plug in the car, don't you, and you walk off and forget about it. But just remember, if you're planning a, a long journey and you really need that to be 18 minutes every time, it ain't going to happen. So. If you're buying this car thinking it's going to be 18 minutes every time you do a charge, yeah, forget about it. But Hyundai, when they add this little feature to precondition the battery, then hopefully we'll get a bit better charging speed. Even then, I was getting about 100 kilowatts at 80% state of charge, which is way more than most EVs can do. So, you know, as I say, a bit of a first world problem. I know this car is still pretty special, I think. Okay, well, I hope you found this video interesting. Um, if you want to get the OBD device, I've got the... Let me just pull it out here. I've got this one. It's called the LE Link, and it's really good. What's good about this one is it also works with Leaf Spy. So it's one of the ones that's recommended for Leaf Spy, and um, that's a fantastic thing I've got for the Leaf. So it works for both, so I'm really happy about that. Um, and... Uh, yeah, it's a fantastic device. It just plugs down there on the OBD port. And the app is also free, but um, yeah, you can upgrade and get rid of the adverts. But that's called Car Scanner. And that's for Android and iOS. And that seems really good if you want to really dig into the technicalities. Oh, and just to say that by the, by the end of the charging session, I've got 30 to 37 degrees on the battery pack. And um, lots of other stuff on here that I don't really understand. To be honest but um, I'll dig into it one of these days thank you very much for watching I hope you enjoyed this video um, please press subscribe and the like button please share it and comment and all the rest of it and um, uh, thank you so much for your support and I'll see you very soon bye for now